Welcome to Down the Road with me, Joel Heitkamp. I get a chance to visit again with Jeffrey Bumgardner today. He's a professor at NDSU. Going to talk about the Rodriguez case. You know, Judge Erickson overturned the death penalty when it comes to this. Now, he was the district judge. I mean, he was the judge that was familiar with the trial, had been part of the trial all along. And Alfonso Rodriguez, this is what, almost 20 years ago? Uh, and uh, he, he's been waiting. I shouldn't say he's been waiting, but uh, justice has been waiting to administer the death penalty for a long time. And so that's been reversed. And we'll visit with uh, Dr. Jeff about that. But first, Nathan Brandt. Now, Nathan, you, you've seen before here on, on uh, Down the Road, but he, he wears many hats, right? He understands what it's like to run heavy equipment. He understands what it's like to represent men and women that uh, are wearing jeans when they go to work during the day, which many of you are as well. Uh, and, and so he, he is, well, he's one of the individuals with the IUOE uh, Local 49. But there's another hat that he wears, which is mayor of the city of Winemere, a city that, uh, as he knows, means a lot to me. That's home for me. Uh, Nathan, or mayor in this particular case, good to have you coming down the road with us. Thanks, Joel. It's nice to be here. Are small towns dead? No, they're not. No, our, our rural communities um, are thriving. Uh, people are moving out. Uh, I think uh, moving out of the bigger cities, I should say. Uh, school systems are good. That's what they're looking for. Um, but I will say that there's some communities that have a closed sign on their on their door. Uh, Wymere's not one of them. Uh, we're looking for people to move to town. We're looking for businesses. And I think to survive, uh, to compete with the bigger communities in, in North Dakota, uh, you have to be open for business. Um, it, it, w when I talk to mayors, it, it seems like some things never change from back in my day in the North Dakota Senate, uh, which is housing, housing, and housing. Mm -hmm. uh, how did how do you get because I drive through Weimar, you know that that's mm -hmm. that's home area for me, and I see some new housing startups. Yeah. And and we're not talking about community federal uh, you know kind of uh, housing put in. I'm talking about people investing money in some pretty big houses. Yeah. How do you get that? I mean, how how are you able to push that? Well, availability of lots is one thing. I mean, that's you know in the communities. I mean, do you look at uh, spending three four million dollars in building a uh, a new area for people to buy houses because that's a huge ask of the community. Uh, we, we've gone through and we've mitigated a bunch of homes that need to need to be gone. Uh, the city of Wymere, we're giving lots to people that want to build. Uh, we don't have a price tag on them. Uh, we're encouraging them to, uh, you know, build a new house. Uh, we got the house factory in Wymere that is busier right now than it has been in a long time. If they can get lumber, I would guess. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, so... You know, you're looking at prices of building materials. It hasn't stopped people. Uh, there's, there's two new houses being built right now in Wymere. Uh, we have a third house that's part of the uh, what Commissioner Berseth has done with the uh, uh, diversion and getting that money for Richland County. Uh, we've got a, a developer coming out and going to build the first house in Wymere with that money. So we're pretty excited about it. That was a big debate uh, when, when Commissioner Nathan Berseth sat there and, and said part of this settlement is going to go into housing for right. small towns. Now, he has a housing project in Colfax, yep. so he took a little bit of a beating on that. I supported him. I, yep. I'm 100 percent behind him because if you look at those projects, uh, that it's housing. Yep. It, and it isn't just a family. It's a town. Yep. These people come with kids. You know, they, they come in a way where... Uh, the school system grows and so i i understand it i get it when you say you give them a lot for free what about the specials what about the water the sewer all the hookup free as well yeah i mean the, there's uh we, we've waived for brand new houses there's three years where they're not paying specials um you know there's a water hookup of course but it's very minimal um you know we're, we're making it easy for people to make a choice to come to weimere and that's what we're doing okay so you mentioned tearing down old houses. Mm -hmm. That's a hard thing to do. The, the, the folks that in many small towns, and actually they got this problem in Fargo. Mm -hmm. It's a debate they had on the Fargo City Commission about six months ago where they, they, they got into a big argument and then the person that owned these houses sued them. Yeah. You know? And so it ended up being a bigger fight than I think what they thought they were taking on. But when you see a house that's been empty for six months and the shrubbery's growing up and yeah. the weeds are growing up and somebody mows it once a year 
What power do you have as a city to deal with that? Well, we have the community. Uh, they want them gone too. Uh, so we'll make phone calls to the owners, say, hey, what do you want to do with this? Do you want to sell it to us? We'll purchase it. Uh, we have a CDC now that is, is getting going and doing a good job. They're reaching out. Um, you know, the, pro the properties that we have torn down, the city themselves has, has used our taxpayer money to buy them and, and dispose of them. What yeah. do you do? You get uh, somebody we'll coming have somebody in right come in and the demo them. Yep, we'll, they'll come in, demo them, and, and, and clear the lot so it's a flat lot. So there's our advertising. Here's a lot. You know, we're trying to infill. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at, you know, certain blocks that, you know, need to rehab. I mean, we're willing to rehab houses if we can. Um, and that's also part of some of this money from Richland County is build a house or get control of it and have a contractor rehab and put it up for sale. What do you say to those other homeowners that uh, are paying specials that have kept their houses up and now taxpayer dollars yep. are being used for other people, you know, that that have done exactly the wrong thing? Yeah, well, it, it's pretty easy because the east side of our town, we've all, we've put in, we're in the process of finishing new streets, new water sewer. Uh, so there'll be some specials with that. Uh, the more people we have in town, the less price everybody pays to improve our town. And that's been a pretty easy sale for people. Uh, we're, we're getting, uh, you know, we're looking at some senior living, uh, doing some stuff like that. Um, but we really, you know, as a whole, people are proud of our town. They wanna, want it to, to look better. Uh, Weimar's always been a neat town where everything's been taken care of. So we really haven't had pushback. I mean, they understand it. What about uh, a scenario where, you know, you're sitting there and you're right on Highway 13? I mean, it takes about two seconds to get to the interstate. Yep. It, it takes longer yep. than that, but if you drive faster on I-29, in a hurry. Yep. If you go west, uh, you're going to find your way to Milner. You're going to find your way to Gwinner, where, of course, you know, you've got yep. a lot of people building bobcats, which your, your dad grew mm -hmm. up doing. Uh, so what do you do in terms of close proximity to areas where you can find groceries, where you can find other things that Weimar might not have. How do you convince them to, to do business in Weimar when it's such a transitional, hey, I can get on the road type community? Yeah, I mean, you know, let's not joke around. I mean, Weimar's been a bed bedroom community for probably the last 20 years. Uh, but what that affords us, it's like me. I mean, I work up here in Fargo uh, most days. If I need something, I grab it on the way home. Uh, we have a, you know, we got a Dollar General here, what, two, three years ago. That's been huge for the city. It, the older, you know, the older folks in town don't have to drive to Wapton or, or go anywhere. Uh, a lot of people will, will run over to Lidgewood now because they do have the grocery uh, store and they, they like to support Lidgewood other than going to Wapton or Fargo. Um, I know a lot of people will run over to Milner, but, you know, with our population where it's at, we can't, you know, financially... Uh, support uh, a grocery store at this point it's something we'd like to have but you know we're concentrating on, on building the town and with more people more business will come what about old cars because th that's something I see in a lot of small towns yep. is people that that don't have cars uh, licensed uh, they're sitting there in many cases got the weeds growing up all around yep. them I mean, what do you do, what power do you have to deal with that? We have the abatement process. It's, a, it's the same as a rundown house. You know, we, uh, we, we notify people. They have 120 days to rectify the situation. If it's get rid of the car, or get it licensed, and get it back on the road. And if they don't, we call a tow service, and they take care of it. And it's like a home. If, if they don't up it, you know, the city will come in and, you know, just like Fargo does, we'll, we'll take the house down and it's on them to pay for it if they don't want to get rid of it. So how much pushback do you get? Zero. How much? You sh Zero. Really? So some of these people don't come and say, hey, that's my car, that was my dad's car, that was my grandpa's car, you had no right to take it, yeah. I want it back, I can store it on my land, my property, my home, you have well, no right to do that. The pushback we get is you had three months to do something with it and you didn't do it. You, know, you had 120 days. I mean, and the thing is we're consistent with everybody. Um, you know, once you get that letter, you have 120 days. And at day 121, you didn't care about it anymore, so we took care of it. And we have the support from the community to do that. Everybody thinks there isn't crime in small towns. Sometimes <laughs> crime finds its way to small oh, yeah. towns because the housing is cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, it isn't just the big metro areas like Fargo that have certain problems. Uh, how do you deal with that in Weimar? I mean, how... 
who's your law enforcement? How do you make sure that uh, the citizens are protected? Well, it's Richland County. Uh, you know, I will tell you now in, uh, in Weimar versus when I was a kid, I could ride my bike through anybody's yard or go pick raspberries from anybody's bushes and you wouldn't get caught. Now, 75% uh, of people in Weimar have uh, security cameras, cameras on their, their homes. Um, it's still the old neighbor, hey, I see somebody, they don't belong, they call Richland County, uh, and Richland County does their best to get out quickly uh, and take care of that. Um, we're going to get to the point here, hopefully, my goal is a population that we're going to have to have somebody in town full time, uh, but right now we can't really justify it, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of community policing, uh, you know, I got, we got the Springer boys that are on, con you know, control <laughs> all the time, so. They're We're pretty done. proud of Weimar. Yeah, yep. if, if folks, if you knew who the Springer boys are, you'd know not to mess with them. <laughs> uh, I'm just telling you that. Uh, you know, what about the infrastructure? Because what I saw in my days managing a real water system was most small towns uh, charge enough to get by. Yep. Uh, they, they charge enough to maybe fix a water break, uh, maybe deal with that, throw a little paint here and there, but they yep. don't charge enough for replacement. Uh, how do you keep up on the infrastructure? Well, I mean, we've had to make that tough decision. You know, we, we try to be uh, responsible to our residents. And, you know, I, I always look at people on fixed incomes in town. You know, I, I look at my parents because they're both retired and they're on a fixed income and look at their friends and say, hey, I don't want to push anybody out of town. But on the other hand, we have to be able to make a fix. Uh, you know, with this project that we're doing now, we had to raise water rates because of um, some monies that we got from the state so they had to raise water rates so that was uh, uh, the first month was a lot of phone calls of what's going on uh, but then when you tell them what's what it's for they understand it um, you know we pay raw water a certain amount of money and we have to be able to keep our head, heads above water as well too uh, but we've done a very good job of being fair and just saying hey you know we have to charge this we don't want to but we have to and it's people understand it well, and the other part that comes along with that is it's awful tough to hear an argument about somebody that the water rate's too high when you pull up and they got a satellite dish hanging on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what's the average water bill in Weimar? Well, I, I'll tell you pre... You raise, you raise a couple boys and you get... Yeah. I mean, what was your water bill a month in Weimar? Well, I, I mean... I'm sitting at probably 100, 110, 120 before the water rates went up. So that's water, sewer, sewer and everything. Yeah. You know, right now it's probably uh, um, 180 bucks, uh, just depending on you know, or else the neighbor that planted new grass and, and watered for three weeks straight, he had a $500 bill. But I mean, that's you know, not it's something choice. that happens all the time. But you know, uh, it's still it's still cheap to live in Lyme here. Yeah. You know? uh, we were looking at a property last night that had a property tax with specials. There was a $500 special, and their yearly specials were $587. Mm -hmm. That's what they paid in property tax. Well, it so. isn't like you weren't a pretty good football player, but your yep. boys are too. Yep. You know, in, in, in the days that I was playing ball against Weimar, you never thought about consolidation. No. It was like every small town had to have a school, and that's a, that's a sign as well. Yep. I mean, the, the, you playing with Ledgewood, you know, a lot, some of your athletics with Milner, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it, how did it take, you know, how much, what did it take to adjust to that? I mean, it really, it really didn't because, um, you know, Weimar and Ledgewood, we, you know, that's where a lot of our friends are. That's where my wife's from. Um, it, uh, it wasn't a big adjustment. You know, when I was in high school, it was football only. It wasn't basketball. So, you know, when basketball ta time came around, there was a little, you know, pushing here mm -hmm. and there and, you know, wait till football practice next fall, you know, type of deal. But yeah. uh, we were a team and, you know, our goal was to do the best we could. So, I mean, it really wasn't that huge of adjustment yeah. for us. It didn't hurt much that uh, the very first uh, year you combined, you won state. Yeah. I, mean, I just point that out. Yeah. What was that, about 87, 87 88? Yep. Yeah. There was a sign on the edge of town yep. as well. Uh, folks, so when we come back, I want to talk to them a little bit about some of the construction projects that are going on, some of the heavy equipment moving, whether or not there's workers to do all this work. So stick around. We're going to keep traveling down the road. Howdy, folks. It's the Caneline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caneline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. 
Top it off with spur rattling pie with a comrade that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell him about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Hi, Hunter Ellis here for Night Hero Binoculars by Atomic Beam. These binoculars let you see anything, even in pitch black darkness. Gotcha. The secrets are powerful wide angle atomic beam laser that reveals objects up to 150 yards away hidden by darkness. During the day, Night Hero gives you 10 times magnification. And when the sun goes down, press the Night Bright button to see clearly in the dark. Light up garbage eating critters or spot thieves before they even get close. Call or click now and get Night Hero binoculars for just $39.99. Order right now and you can double it. Plus, get our best selling atomic beam flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship them to you free. This TV TV special offer is not available on Amazon. You can get it all, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-619-1091. That's 1-800-619-1091. Or visit ByNightHero.com. That's ByNightHero.com. Order now. Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury? After taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Like I said, he's got a lot of hats uh, that he wears. We just got done talking about what it's like to be the mayor of a small town, and I think the story that he told is, well, it's indicative of what a lot of small towns are going through. The ones, you can see it. You can see it the minute you drive through. You can see the ones that have a mayor, uh, like Nathan Brandt, and you can see the ones that don't. And, and I don't mean to make it sound like it's just him. Uh, great city councils, uh, people that care, just citizens uh, that won't stand for letting their town look run down. Now, some of you are in communities or you've seen your old community turn into that. I hope you get after them. I hope you run for mayor. I hope you do those things because that's what makes people say, I want to build a house there. There's no doubt about that. Now, I hung on to Nathan, and one of the reasons is because there's so much construction going on. Uh, I drive to Fargo from the south every day, and of course, the work that's being done in uh, preparation for the FM diversion is astronomical it, it it's i sat one day looking at all the equipment i shouldn't say sat but drove by at the speed limit i might add and looked at uh, all of the equipment moving and i you try to put a cost estimate on that and there's no way uh, there's no way and you realize why these contractors uh, they make a couple bucks well they make a couple bucks because they deserve it now they're able to do it because of the workers that are running those trucks, that are running the backhoe, that are running those dozers. Uh, those are the people each and every day that this country needs. Well, Nathan Brandt represents them, and I want to get a chance to visit with him about it. And, and Nathan, in terms of the amount of workers you need to get the job done, quite frankly, for our state in America, mm -hmm. do you have them? Do you have the skilled workforce to run the equipment I just described? Yeah, I mean, currently right now we're sitting pretty good, and I think I told you the other day, Joel, that we've we've uh, really haven't had shortages. Uh, we've been able to fill all of our positions. Uh, we've got more apprentices coming in, new new uh, construction workers now than we ever have. 
but that doesn't mean that uh, you know one job that takes you know a couple hundred operators uh, you have a different story there but right now we've been been able to fill the spots and recruiting you know new construction workers so we're, we're sitting pretty good as operators right now uh, you know you make the same drive I do I realize you go up highway 18 yep. sometimes and but sometimes you come up the interstate yep. How many dollars worth of equipment do you think they got out there? Is that all industrial builders, or who's doing it? No, that? the industrial builders has the project, they're the general on it. Uh, the, the biggest portion of it is park construction. They're out of the cities. Uh, that's, you know, you're seeing the 15 off-road trucks, the multiple dozers, the back holes, the, you know, the scrapers, you know, the funnest job out there, the scraper. Uh, at least okay, why is that the funnest job? Well, out? it's a joke. Chiropractor's dream is running a scraper because you're you get beat up. <laughs> you're bouncing around. Yeah, you're getting bounced around. But I, I mean, dollar wise, I mean, you know, several million dollars alone in equipment. Um, but that's what it takes. You know, they they've got a time frame which, you know, this summer has been one of the best construction seasons we've ever seen. You know, we haven't had days off it, if, because of rain or weather. You know, excluding last week, mm -hmm. uh, they've really made hay there. And, and in three years. You're going to drive over there, Joel, and where those lanes are being moved to is, are going to be back farming fields. You know, right. It's going to be taken out three years from now. That farmer will be able, be able to farm his land again. Um, and that's that takes a lot of work, too. Uh, these guys are highly skilled. Uh, they're trained uh, safe, safely, uh, work, and, and get the job done. So it's pretty impressive when you go out there and see kind of where they started with a bunch of laughs in a field to where they're at now. Right. So. It's a... It's amazing how it much is. dirt got moved, and and so for folks in coal country and, and oil country that that are taught, you know, they're listening to us right now. They're like, "Welcome to it." I yeah. mean, we've been going through that and and, and having that same thing yeah. for a long time. It's called economic development. Right. Somebody's selling fuel. Yeah. It, it, let me ask you this, because you're west of the Red River. Mm -hmm. I mean, this project's being built in North Dakota, which is a right to work state. Mm -hmm. It's not a union state, mm -hmm. and yet these. These workers doing this work are union. Yep. Why? Why don't? Why do they? Because if you get union, I understand the quality. I get yep. that. But you're going to pay a couple bucks more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the 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 contractors, you know, is one of our contractors. They don't care because they know that the product they're getting, they're going to get the job done on time and probably uh, before it's supposed to be done. Uh, it, 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 when you go back to it, it's all about that training, uh, what the expectations are. Uh, you know, one thing that I think needs to be said, too, is, you know, what our union is different from different unions. If a guy can't do the job, he's not going to be there. They're, they, they don't hide them. Uh, they, they have to be able to do the work that's set out for them. If they can't, the contractor gets rid of them, and we send them somebody that can. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no hiding somebody. No, you know, the, the term lazy union worker that you hear, which drives me crazy. Yeah. You know, that's not part of what we do. Which both you and I know is a bunch of... Uh, yeah, well, it's excuses. Let's see, what can I say on TV yeah. versus you and I can say at the yeah. Black Pelican in Weimar. Right. It's a whole different deal. So, you know, you sit there and you look at the, the skills. They have to be developed as well. Mm -hmm. I think people don't realize, you know, that you don't just throw somebody into that scraper, right. in, on that blade, and just instantly they're good at it. Uh, you invest in yourself. Yeah, we do. Uh, it's part of that training center that we talked about. But I will tell you, there's there's a very small percentage of guys that just get it. I mean, they, they can do it. Uh, but the majority is it's starting out as an apprentice, uh, you know, starting on the small equipment, the skid steers, the, the mini excavators, the rollers. Um, they get through a season, then they go out to our training center and say, hey, you know, I want to I work on being a dozer operator or loader or backhoe. So, um, it's free for our members to go out there. Our contractors, you know, tell them, hey, you did a great job. And if you, you want to come back next year, you got to get more skills. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a, you know, you have to invest in yourself in, in this career. Uh, the more things you know how to run, the longer you're going to work, the more desirable to the contractors you're going to be. Uh, there's a lot of training, uh, and I, guys I, do it. I was mad at myself because, you know, I've worked around heavy construction, mm -hmm. heavy equipment all my life. And, uh, you know, you sit there and... Uh, you know, when I started Real Water, we had 500 miles of pipe. When I left, we had 2,800. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pipe that mm -hmm. went in the ground, a lot of work that got done, a lot of reservoirs. I had to call you and ask what a piece of equipment was the other day. Mm -hmm. That that was a pride issue. Yeah. That really was. Well, I, that, I, I will give you a break, though. That's a specialty piece that you don't see all the time. It, describe know. to people what it was. It was an attachment for a backhoe that can be used uh, for drilling caissons or, or pounding pile in. 
It, it's just a special. But it was hooked to a backhoe. Yeah, it was hooked to a backhoe. I mean, that's 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 where equipment is is going. I mean, they're they're making attachments for other pieces of equipment, so you don't have to bring a crane in. Um, you know, some of them drill, you know, down, yeah. and so you can fill up piers with concrete or rock. I mean, that's just the the ever morphing equipment in yeah. the world, you know. And it's like you scratch your head and say, well, you know, who do who who do I have that can run that thing? <laughs> you know, I, mean, I can tell you this: it looked like an oil rig. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate no it. Thank you. Uh, when we come back, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Bumgardner. Uh, well, you've seen it in the news: Alfonso Rodriguez, um, the the conviction of death uh that you know is overturned there will be no death penalty in his case or at least i don't believe so so we'll visit with dr Baumgartner about that when we come back hello i'm mike lindell and i'm coming to you with one of the most important commercials that i've ever done all of you know what my pillow and myself have gone through in the last eight months in my efforts to bring the truth forward well now you can help in a couple ways First, get everyone you know to go to my new media platform, frankspeech.com. There you'll find all the footage from my cyber symposium and many other important broadcasts. Also, I am personally doing a new daily live show to get the truth out. It's at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Secondly, I'm offering some of the best prices ever on my pillow products but they're only available on frankspeech.com. Go to frankspeech.com now and use the promo code on your screen or call the 1-800 number below to receive these exclusive MyPillow offers. Thank you and God bless. Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra-comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three cool turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more cool turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real cool turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 Welcome to No Apologies, your after-hours oasis of sanity. God, your ego is so tiny um, and fragile. I'm Rick Becker. And I'm Lori Hins. Make no mistake, folks, we lost. Again, we lost the war in Afghanistan. Dynamic. There's oh, nothing, nothing There's nothing wrong with rattling the cages of the old guard. Your retreat begins at 9 central on Beck News and online at beck.news. It's been so long a goal that some of you don't uh, maybe remember or never even heard of the Drew Shadeen case. But if you're my age and you're anywhere near that era, you know it. You know about Alfonso Rodriguez and you know what that trial was. It was not just the talk of this area, but it was the talk of the nation. Uh, and, and because it was so vicious and because it happened right here in our backyard, it was high profile. It really was. Well. Uh, Drew Wrigley was the prosecutor. He was the U.S. attorney for the state of North Dakota at that time. And uh, this all happened, I think, in 2003, 2004, something like that. Uh, but a jury convicted him and gave him a death sentence. And so that has been in dispute for a long time. Well, Judge Ralph Erickson was the district judge at that time in that area. Now he sits as a federal judge 
and Judge Erickson, who was involved in this trial, who made some rulings in regards to the death sentence that are that contradict what he did now, he's gotten a lot of attention. And so Judge Erickson has ruled that the death penalty no longer applies. Uh, he's he's gone along with the fact that there won't be a death penalty or shouldn't be in this case. Dr. Jeffrey Bumgarner is a man that we rely to on to talk about a lot of things, not the least of which is this overturning of the Rodriguez death sentence. Doctor, good to have you back on down the road. Ah, good to be here, Joel. Thanks. What happened? What, what <laughs> When you went back and read this, what happened? I, I haven't had a chance to look at the actual uh, opinion written by uh, Judge Erickson. It's a uh, you know, a couple hundred pages plus uh, long, but just from the news reports that you've seen, I've seen, looks like there was a couple of issues that uh, that Judge Erickson addresses in his appeal. Um, he talks about, uh, you know, first and foremost, that uh, the defense counsel erred and not, you know, possibly pursuing, a, you know, a mental health issues, even a possibly an insanity defense. Uh, so that was a concern of, of Judge Erickson's, as well as the testimony of the medical examiner from Ramsey County, finding that there was, uh, I think the words he used were misleading uh, and other kinds of errant statements or speculative statements made by the medical examiner at the time. So when you read what I did read uh, and you talk to certain attorneys that you trust that, that of course, this was... This was, uh, you know, interesting and absolutely must reading for them right away. Uh, the one thing that, that they consistently say, no matter which attorney I talk to, is that Judge Erickson sounds mad, in his opinion. That uh, he feels as though that he as a judge uh, wasn't necessarily told the truth and was lied to and all this. You know, I, I mentioned before I brought you in about how he's been active and was through this case all the time until now he's at the Eighth Circuit. What role did he play in all this? When you when you look back, does he have the right to be mad, I guess is a fair question. <laughs> yeah, some of these things, if these were a problem, uh, it was really his responsibility to catch them at trial. Uh, I believe he was the district judge uh, when this uh, you know went to trial uh, uh, federally. And uh, it's I find it kind of odd that now he's in a position on the Eighth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals uh, reviewing his own case. I'm, that strikes me as odd right on the face of it. Um, uh, and maybe we wouldn't have heard about it so much if it weren't for this case. Obviously, this case, very high profile. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, in, in looking at his reasoning uh, for uh, setting aside the sentence that, that he himself uh, handed out uh, as a district judge, as a trial judge, um, you know, I, you know, I guess I, I I'm probably with uh, some of the other uh, critics out there that say this, this is, uh, you know, this seems like a little bit of a stretch for the for, for uh, Judge Erickson to do this, uh, um, and not a liberal judge by any stretch. I mean, he was, you know, a Republican appointed judge, but, um, but he seems to have some personal issues with with how this particular trial, uh, in retrospect, how it how it how it played out, uh, you know, the idea that defense counsel was providing ineffective assistance just doesn't seem to fly with me and my read of, of uh, you know, the, the def basically, you, you know, it's not enough to lose a case. That, that's not proof that you had ineffective assistance of counsel. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's not enough if, you're, if your defense attorneys made strategic blunders or made decisions that if they'd made different decisions, it might have gone your way. That's not the test for whether or not you had uh, a, a poor, you know, an unconstitutional level, uh, you know, quality of defense. Um, and and so some of the reasoning that Judge Erickson is throwing out for for, for tossing this, this sentence uh, just seems problematic to me. I, I, I suspect the, the United States government is going to uh, try to get this before uh, the entire Eighth Circuit, uh, and 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 you know appeal you know Judge Erickson's decision here. Do, do you think so? Uh, and and the reason I ask this question is because, you know, it's a new administration, a new time. Uh, when you look at the costs that were incurred in defense of this whole thing, do you think it's it's likely that they they do what you say, or do you think that the Merrick Garlands of the world say that's enough? 
Uh, I mean, that's enough. He's he's put away for life. There's two trials here. There's a trial that found him guilty, and then there's a trial that that sentenced him, and it's the one that sentenced him that that we're really in debate of here. And of course, there's there's the evidence now that Drew Shadeen wasn't raped, or at least the belief that she wasn't raped. So to open up that whole can of worms is is a whole nother issue, which is why we're talking about the the medical examiner in large part. I mean, would it be time? I'll ask the question a different way. What would it be time for Merrick Garland to say that's enough? Put them away. We're done spending money on this. Well, um, <clears throat> I suppose uh, I suppose that is a possibility, especially you know uh, with this administration and they're. I think they have a uh, you know some general concerns about the death penalty anyway. Uh, nevertheless, they are you know you know you know this administration is in court defending the death sentence for uh, uh, Joe Karsanayev, uh, the Boston Marathon bomber. Um, so even though they have some concerns about the death penalty, perhaps generally, there's certain you know celebrity cases that 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 they seem to want to preserve that sentence, and this might this might rise to that level as well. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it just certainly to a lot of people, and I, you know, uh, if you're not a, a proponent of the death penalty, this would never seem like a just sentence. But if you are, this seems to be the kind of case that the death penalty is created for, and and. Uh, so for, for those who would support the death penalty in cases like this, they would probably uh, see the retreat or, or the abandonment of the death penalty by the government as a, as, a, as a falling down of sorts. Well, if you're not going to administer the death penalty in this case, then I don't know which one you're going to. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I could not agree with you more in this particular case. Um, I, I went to visit and, and to uh, tour, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, the, the Cass County Jail. Sheriff Paul Laney said, come over and look at our facility, uh, because at that time there was a lot of discussion about whether or not it was built big enough, those type of issues. He took me into this jail cell, and he, you know, albeit small, but very easy to observe. And he had me sit on this bench that was in that jail cell. And he said, sit right there. And he said, just kind of rock yourself back and forth. And I'm like, where the heck is he going with this? <laughs> uh, you know, and I did it. And he said, right there, every day, no TV, no radio, no nothing, no books, no magazine is where Alfonso Rodriguez sat. And that's all he did, is he just sat there and he rocked back and forth. And he said, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the type of individual he was. Now, we can talk about mental, mental competence. We can talk about all those issues. But, you know, for me personally, never been an, a fan or an advocate for the death penalty, but I would have slept just fine. Uh, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Baumgartner, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with this on a federal level now. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Absolutely. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, he's good at what he does, ladies and gentlemen. Dakota Rudisell joins us when we come back. He's a professor at Ohio State University. He was there 20 years ago when this nation was attacked on 9-11. Let's visit with him. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. 
Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan. And yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. At Beck Communications, we've been planning for your future. Over the past decade, we've placed nearly 200,000 miles of dedicated fiber optics in the ground. Enough fiber optic strands to circle the world eight times. Taking no shortcuts, we connected every home and business in our service area with dedicated fiber optics. It's your personal, unrestricted, unthrottled connection to the world. Best of all, this dedicated fiber means you do not share your connection. We call this intimate, dedicated connection Beck Fiber. We're talking about all these things that age me. Obviously, we just got done visiting about the Drew Shadeen trial and uh, how that went with Alfonso Rodriguez. Well, now, 20 years later, uh, coming up this weekend, uh, we've got um, the anniversary of what was a tragic day. Uh, America was attacked on 9-11. Dakota Rudisell is now a professor at Ohio State University. He was there. Uh, he was a U.S. Senate staffer. He handled uh, and worked in the area of national defense, and he was, uh, he was somebody that helped out and worked with the Senate Budget Committee uh, and a national security policy holder for the chairman of that Budget Committee, which was United States Senator and North Dakota Senator Kent Conrad. Let's bring him in. Dakota, good to have you coming down the road with us. Great to be here. All right. How old were you on 9-11 20 years ago? 20 years ago, I was 29 years old. And as you mentioned, um, I worked for uh, our great Senator Kent Conrad. Um, and I was uh, at the Senate Budget Committee, which then he headed as the chairman of that committee. Um, and I handled the national defense and the international affairs uh, budget accounts. So the obvious question is, what was it like? You get up that morning, you throw on that suit and tie. Uh, you go to work. You know the work you're doing is important. You know it's in the area of making sure this nation stays safe, how much money needs to be spent on that, all the things that Senator Conrad and you worked on. And somewhere in that day, you're seeing history. You're seeing something that led to this country getting in two wars. You're seeing something that led to this country changing every day how we approach and look at things. What was it like to be a 29-year-old in Washington, D.C., and see all that play out? Well, it was pretty unforgettable, um, you know, but it started like a very normal day. Um, I remember that I was uh, driving into the underground parking lot there at the Capitol complex, and I was listening to the radio, and there had been a report that uh, they reported the small plane had hit uh, one of the World Trade Center towers and that a fire had started. Um, and I just thought, well, this is a horrifying freak accident, you know, towering inferno. Um, by the time I got to my office, which was uh, in the Russell Senate office building, which is just across the street from the Capitol, um, you know, we had the TVs on and we saw that a second plane hit the second tower. We saw about half an hour thereafter, uh, there were reports that the Pentagon had been hit. Um, I remember that morning we were talking about a hearing we were going to have on the defense budget, and I realized this whole conversation we're having about where the defense budget is just went out the window. I mean, America is plainly under attack. Uh, we got evacuated then, and I remember as I was uh, walking briskly uh, through the halls of uh, the Senate Russell building that I saw my colleagues from the Senate Intelligence Committee, and they were running, and they looked scared. And I thought, you know, when the intelligence people look scared, you know, it's time to run too. And so I did. And so I ran uh, with them and with a crowd, and we emerged out into uh, the Senate Park, 
which is right to the north of the Senate. Uh, it's right to the north of the Capitol. And it became clear to us very, very quickly that we were standing next to uh, a terrorist target. Um, and, you know, would we stand there and watch that beautiful temple to our republic suffer the same fate as the Twin Towers? It was just kind of a horrifying thing, but what could we do? I mean, we couldn't go back to work. Um, you know, nobody had internet, there were no smartphones. The cell networks were all overloaded. Um, and, you know, it was just this feeling of just profound helplessness and confusion. I mean, we didn't know it was Al-Qaeda then. We didn't know who it was. Did you decide whether or not you should be there that close to the, the Capitol? You had to think, as you said, this is a target. I mean, was there any inkling to get as far away from Capitol Hill as you could? Yeah, I mean, that was a that was something that, you know, we were having conversations about and there were conversations about Sen with Senator Conrad about that, too. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember that he was adamant that he did not want to leave the Capitol complex. He did. He recognized this is a terrorist attack. He was not going to be terrified as a United States senator, part of our government's decision making leadership. He wasn't going. And I remember at the time I thought, you know, I was very worried about him and I was worried about the continuity of government in the sense of what if our leaders are killed. Um, but on the other hand, I also felt it was a very resolute stand on his part, a very brave stand, and I deeply respected that. Um, after a while, those of us who were staff members just kind of decided among ourselves that we, you know, we just needed to go home. Um, you know, again, we couldn't go back to work. Uh, we couldn't work remotely at the time. Um, and so I joined an exodus through the streets of, of Washington. Um, I walked to my, my apartment, which th was thankfully not far on Capitol Hill. Um, and uh, I thought, you know, um, I have no reason, based on the facts we have before us, to think that this terrorist attack is over. Um, and so I thought, well, what can I do? I, I walked to the little store on the corner about a block away from my apartment on Capitol Hill, just, just stocked up on whatever supplies I could. Um, there are just kind of two guys in there standing around, kind of bewildered. Um, you know, people were still in shock. So I just got a bunch of supplies. I went home, grabbed a backpack, packed a go kit with the stuff that I thought I would need in case Washington DC got evacuated in case there were more attacks. And then, you know, I just watched TV like the rest of America for the rest of that day. Um, and uh, just just tried to absorb it and, and think about what the future might hold. So what were what were the skies like? Uh, and, and I asked this because the Pentagon had already been hit. The plane that went down in Pennsylvania, you didn't know about yet, I'm assuming. Uh, when you were right. on Capitol Hill, and everybody looks at that plane as though it was headed right towards you, and the heroes that brought that thing down in, in Pennsylvania, nobody knew about what they had done on behalf of this country. Uh, but what were the skies like? What, what, you know, because if if you clearly and Senator Conrad clearly knew this was a an act of terror and, and America was under attack around D.C., my guess is you had to see some pretty heavy duty equipment up in the sky. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that's one of the pieces of 9-11 was the sky. I mean, the, the attack came from the sky. And the other thing was that it was such a beautiful day in New York City. You know, you can see that in the pictures and the tapes from 9-11. It was in Washington. Actually, I, I read somewhere that it was basically a cloudless day in the whole country, which is just rare. And it was, temp it was temperate. It was this beautiful, gorgeous day. And in fact, that entire fall was like that. There were so many days like that. And yet, you know, out of this beauty, all this horror was coming. Um, and so very quickly um, after the attacks, uh, the FAA grounded all commercial aircraft in America and just put them down. Nearest airport, put them down. And so the skies emptied over the country and all that was left was Air Force One with, pre with President George W. Bush staying airborne to stay away from any attacks. And then Air National Guard F-16 fighter units that had been scrambled, including North Dakota Air National Guard uh, aircraft, which which had their alert station at the time, was in Langley, Virginia, and they'd gotten scrambled. And I remember when we were standing around uh, near the Capitol building, um, you know, to add to our nerves, there was this boom, this loud boom, and people. There was immediate rumors that there'd been a car bomb at the State Department. That that that, that was not what it was. It was the sonic booms from those F-16s going supersonic to protect Washington D.C. Wow, I can only imagine. Uh... What, what was it like the next day? 
I mean, the next day when you, because everybody remembers that day, where they were that day. I was on the campus of NDSCS. There was a legislative committee hearing there that I had to go and speak to on behalf of the college and uh, try to raise some money, do all of that. And I walked into that room, and I'll never forget Senator Dave Nething was the chair uh, from Jamestown of the committee then. And I said, we're under attack as a nation. And he said, we're going to get our work done here. And I said, well, you're going to do it without me. Uh, and I walked into the student union and took all of this in with with a number of the students, and uh, everybody recognized it. Uh, they they really yeah. did. They recognized what was going on. And so the next day, when you were probably asked to go back to work or do what you do, yeah. what was that like? Oh, it was one of the most emotional days I can remember. I mean, that first day, I think, like a lot of people, like humans are, you know, when you're just faced with a sudden jolt like that you go kind of numb you're just in shock you're just dealing with it but the next day i'd gotten uh actually a good night's sleep i wanted to make sure i slept because i didn't know what the next days were going to hold and i just kind of myself to get a good night's sleep i remember at the office i just felt just tremendous anger and just deep sadness at what had occurred and you know part of it was now we understood what had happened with the fourth fourth flight that was united flight 93 it, it uh uh, took off out of Newark. Thankfully, there was a regular ground delay in Newark. And so by the time that when that plane was over Ohio heading for San Francisco, when the four hijackers slashed the throats of the pilots, um, the, the passengers on that plane used the air phones, called their loved ones, and because the flight had been delayed, their loved ones knew the other attacks were underway and told them. And then the passengers, as we know, rose up fought the hijackers, the plane crashed in, in Western Pennsylvania, um, but it's well understood that it was heading for the Capitol. And if it had been on time, or if those Americans had not did what they did, you know, we can only speculate about what would have happened to that Capitol building, what would have happened to all of us who were there. And I remember that morning on September 12th, I, I kind of understood this and it hit me and I just had, you know, anger and sadness, but also just profound gratitude for what those people did. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, uh, you're going to be able to tell that story, uh, thankfully, to many people, and I appreciate you telling it to us. You bet. Thank you. Dakota Rudisell, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, some closing comments about the Rodriguez trial and how this all shook out uh, right after this. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month, so call now and make going to the dentist carefree. Call 1-800-416-5739 to receive your Carefree Dental Card Information Kit. 1-800-416-5739. Call now. I can't say enough good things about these nano hearing aids. Real people talking about nano hearing aids. The hearing quality is great. Until now, hearing aids used to be too expensive for the average person. Until nano. Call now and you'll get your nano hearing aids for only $297. You'll save $100. When you buy one hearing aid, nano will give you a second hearing aid free. Call right now. 1-800-213-3815. Spas, etc. Yeah, yeah. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, shuffle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, 
I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented my pillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Well, uh, we now know uh, that the death sentence for Alfonso Rodriguez has been overturned. Well, at least for now. We're going to find out what the federal government's going to do. But uh, Ralph Erickson, the, the, the district judge, the federal district judge at that time was the one that heard the case. Now he finds himself, uh, you know, at the Eighth Circuit. That's a big appointment. That's, that's a big promotion, for lack of a better way of putting it. And he's the one then that provided that sentence and he's the one now that is saying no to that sentence how do we get there what happened i think that's worth all of our time to take a look at the one thing i do know that happened in those 20 years is a lot of money was spent a lot of money was spent and so you got to ask the question of whether it was worth it i would sleep just fine tonight if i found out that alfonso rodriguez was put to death today so I'm not saying this in terms of an anti-death sentence uh, citizen of the United States of America. What I'm saying this as is someone who's wondering whether or not a death sentence versus life imprisonment for the whole rest of your life, you're sitting there, whether or not those two aren't comparable in so many ways. This one's a pound of flesh. I get it. And this one doesn't deter what he does. It doesn't. All studies have proven that. Um, so the money, the time, the energy, I don't think it was worth it. Good riding with you folks. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. And as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com.